to be a superpower. They know exactly what to say, when to say it. They know when to cut in on any opportunity. Unfortunately, many women fall prey to such men because we're naturally kind and empathetic in nature. And such men use that opportunity to take advantage of us, which is so, so sad. And having an encounter with a con man or a romance con artist or a love con artist, whatever you call them, having an encounter with them is never a pleasant experience. So it's something that is rather avoided than experienced. So for those of you that are in relationships right now, how do you recognize if the person you're with is a con man? Has he been conning you all this while? Or if the relationship is new, how do you safeguard against such people? I'm going to give you a risk that you should look out for in your man to know if he's for real or not. Now, take note that con artists are very good storytellers. Like I was saying, uh, I have a container coming from abroad. Okay. Yeah, yes. I, I have a brother that works with a, you know, presently he's working with the Queen of England. He, oh. You know, coming from a very influential family, we were able to get a job for for him, okay. working with the Queen of England. Okay. When he sent like a million pounds every month. A million yeah, pounds yeah. every month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. We, we had to ask him to really stop it because he was sending it like every week. But we are like, um, you know, it's not, it's not be too right to keep sending money. You know, Nigeria, you, you know how it is over in this side of the world, okay. right? Okay. So we just asked him to cut it down. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. uh, um, I hope you're enjoying the meal. It's, yeah. it's delicious. Yeah, yes. Delicious. Uh, this is how we eat. When, this is how we, we dine with um, when, when we are over there, you okay. know, buffet okay. style. Buffet nice, style. nice. Yeah. These are very expensive meals. Of course, of course. We don't eat cheap, you know. We don't eat cheap. I see. We don't eat cheap, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot my my um, wallet. I was in a hurry to meet up with you, so I guess I left my wallet at home. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know if you can... Uh, Pay for the food this time around. I, I'll make it up to you. Um. Well, you know, it's like fifty thousand naira for everything. So, um, can't you use your debit card? Um. I don't really want to. You know, uh, it's more of a dollar account. I avoid using a credit card. You, you, you know, it, there's a lot of money in it. So, mm. you, you know how it goes now. Uh, why don't you do transfer with your phone? I'm sure they will accept it. Uh, I, I don't really want to do transfer, you know, because it's such a small amount of money. And then they might take, I'm being defrauded, so they might block the account. Yeah. You just take charge of this one, uh, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the next one. You know, we are very rich in our family. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can, can you just do the honors? I'll make it up to you. They can tell you pathetic, heart-wrenching, touching stories. They are very good storytellers. So, it makes me think, why don't they use their talent to maybe write a book? or write a script for a movie or something. They have active imaginations and they use that to garner your empathy. And before you know it, you're doing things that you never planned to do just to make them happy. It's even worse when you're in love with them. They are not empathetic. They do not pity you. The more in love with them that you are, the better for them. They can squeeze you dry of whatever resources they are after that you have. So, number one, you never see any family photos. He tells you about the famous family that he's from. Uh, his brother is a famous person. His sister is a famous person. He is not. But everybody around him is. Can you imagine that? So he keeps telling me about all the wealth and accomplishments that the family have. But you never see photographic evidence of all these things he's saying. Some of them will show you one picture that maybe he took with the acclaimed famous person that is either his brother or his father. Just one picture. And it will be a very formal picture. Very formal. And that is the only picture that they have with their family. I mean, in this day and age, there is no informal photo. You know the way family photos are. That you might just, you know, on the dining table, you will just take a selfie with your dad in his t-shirt and shorts, you know, with a palm sandal, a very casual situation. You never see such casual photos. Only that one photo that he took with that famous person. That is the only evidence he has that he's related to a famous person. If somebody does not show you photos of his family, childhood photos where you see the so-called famous person carrying them from birth, if they are their father, taking photos while they are doing goofy things together, if he claims that they are his siblings, if you don't see such informal photos, please, please open your eyes and do more research. 
many people have been conned because you just saw one photo of him being related to a famous person and because of that you let down your guard you did not see other photos no christmas photos no group family photos nothing else only one photo of you and that famous person meanwhile you are from a family of seven where are your other siblings you might show you one photo of somebody from here that is one thing they do they go to facebook and they download photos of pretty ladies and say that those are their sisters they'll go to the internet and download photos and claim that they are their family so if you don't see them together in a family setting with the acclaimed famous person please ask for more evidence and take it easy before you make any commitment and then number two they never make it possible for you to meet their family i need a drink by the way, what I'm taking today is um, vitamin C, a pharmacy tablet with zinc. It has really helped me. It boosts your immunity. So if you're interested in it, I'll put the link in the description box. When you cannot have a bowl of fruit, sometimes you just need it condensed. And you can put it in your water bottle, take it to work, take it while you're working out. Or even to church, when you have a long list of meetings and programs to attend, just be sipping while you're at it. So they never make it possible for you to meet their family because their family do not know that they are con men. So of course they do not want to have contact with them. So they'll keep giving excuses upon excuses. I've had a lot of interesting excuses from somebody like that. Uh, my sister is writing an exam, a professional exam that's supposed to last for one week. Then after one week, you're seeking to see the family. Uh, suddenly somebody is sick and all the family has to travel abroad to stay by the sick person. When you try to make another opportunity, um, suddenly the father is so busy with all the business meetings and so on and so forth. They always come up with excuses. You might be engaged to this man, I'm telling you. You might be engaged to him, but he will never make it possible for you to see his family. There's always one flimsy excuse after another, coupled with a lot of touching stories. And you're in love with them, so you will be understanding. And that is how they have power over you. And then number two leads to number three. Since they do not make it possible for you to see their family, they try to hurry you into marriage, hurry you into making a commitment. If you complain that you cannot get married without the consent of your family, they'll tell you, okay, let's do a court marriage quickly. Anybody that rushes you into a marriage without the consent of your family, or when it is not yet time for you, you, are, you, don't, you do not feel ready, you better watch out for such a one. They might not have good intentions for you. That is one tactic that come men use. They rush everything because they know that time reveals all things time reveals all things so they don't give you that time they just crowd you with everything all their plans and their aspirations and their dreams and they try to make you to get into a commitment with them so that by the time you realize who they really are it's already too late number four they never make it possible for you to go close to their friends most times such con people they don't have their family in the same country or in the same state or they might be in another part of the state where the family do not even know they are existing and that is where they will be doing all their con activities so when you discover that they have friends here maybe neighbors or um, colleagues at work an office where they will never allow you to come and visit them by the way so when you discover such people they will never make it possible for you to meet them or to befriend them they might just introduce you but they don't want you to get close and you know how they do that they start telling you very nasty things about their friends they have nothing good to say about their friends. Imagine, the person they spend most of their time with, they will have nothing good to say about that person because they don't want you to go close to them. They might even tell you directly to avoid such people that maybe he's a womanizer and they're afraid that he will get you. So that is why they don't want you to go. If the friend is married, they might lie that the man is um, seeing other women apart from his wife just so that you will have a bad feeling about them and you will not go close to them because he knows that when you go close to them things will be revealed the secret will no longer be a secret and in conversation they might just hint between what he has told you and what they know about him if you start exchanging stories you will realize that everything he's telling you is false they don't want you to come close to their friends and number five something to look out for a con man is always telling you about all the women that are chasing him because he's such a hot fish. He psychologically controls you by telling you that many women are attracted to him, many women are chasing him, so that that way, even if you have developed second thoughts and you are planning to meet him, by the time you hear that a lot of people are pursuing him, you will want to stay a little bit longer that, oh, maybe I should give him a chance. 
he's a nice guy. I mean, if a lot of women want him, then he's a good prospect. They know how to use that psychological trick to control you. Because a man who is surrounded by women looks more attractive. I spoke about that in one of my videos. So they use that trick, always lying. Sometimes even when you're walking with them on the street, they try to show you, you see that lady? She has been trying to get me. But, ha, huh, you don't know I have my queen here. Nobody can get me apart from my queen. How does that make you feel? So you will want to stick with them longer. And that is how they dispel all second thoughts that you might have. A real man does not stress about all the ladies that are making advances to him. He doesn't make a big deal about it. If you're in a very deep relationship, he might just mention it in passing. But he doesn't make a big deal about it. Somebody who is making a big deal about it, pointing out to the people, always stressing how hot he is and how people are attracted to him, how ladies are pursuing him, that person should be investigated. Do more research on that particular person. And number six, something that is common with all con artists. They are very quick to show you evidence of qualifications that they have attained, of awards that they've received, or of wealth, imagine wealth that they have. They are very quick to show you evidence without you asking. This is the kind of man that can come to a restaurant when you're having lunch with his medical certificate just to prove to you that he's truly a doctor. Ask the real medical doctors out there. They don't walk around with their certificates. I'm not sure they have to show their wife their certificate before they accepted them. So the reason why they try to cloud your mind with all the fake evidence is so that you will not investigate them too closely. Because if you go and find out who they are for yourself, of course it will not work out well for them. Because they are not real. Their qualifications are not real. All their attainment is never real. So they bring the evidence to your face in order to stop any investigation that you might want to do. They talk a lot about imagined wealth that they have. <laughs> you know, coming from a rich family here. They are the ones that will tell you about all the politicians that they usually have lunch and breakfast with. They are the ones that will tell you about all the famous artists that they know that are always begging them to come to their shows and so on and so forth. They always have fabulous stories to tell. You don't really see them walking. You don't see them in action. They just show you evidence. I mean, anybody can fake a certificate nowadays. Anybody can lie that they are from where they are not, that they schooled where they did not. So, somebody who is always pushing their certificates, pushing evidence of their wealth or their qualifications into your face should be scrutinized closely. Number seven, right from day one, he begins to lavishly spend on you. I mean, he's just flashing his wealth all over giving you things, buying you things, taking you to nice places, right from day one. As he's talking about all the wealth that he has, he's also spending on you. But you know the catch? There is a catch. <laughs> After spending on you for a while, it will turn around. He'll begin to borrow from you. He'll begin to ask for money. A little here, maybe just 20,000 here, so that he can go and bail out his brother that um is in police case because um the police caught him driving drunk and they don't want the father to find out and his account right now because it's a dollar account he cannot easily access it so if you can just give him twenty thousand naira let him bail his brother-in-law out of jail because if they don't bail him on time the father will find out and he'll be very angry you know he's famous it will spoil their reputation <laughs> a lot of touching stories or he might even ask for a big sum all at once. Oh, there's this investment he needs to do very quickly. And he doesn't want the opportunity to pass. You know, he's trying to build a future for both of you. So if you can just give him 200,000 naira, let him just put it in investment. By tomorrow, you make a transfer to your account of your complete money. In fact, he will even add to it. He might promise to give you like 400,000 naira for trusting him enough to give him 200,000 naira. They are very convincing. The best storytellers artists they are trained for it they are good at storytelling and here it is never ever borrow a man money if you are not married to him don't get financially tangled up with somebody you are not married to don't borrow money to somebody you are not married to a real man will not beg you for money even if he's on his last 1000 he will find a way to manage it until he can make ends meet until he can get other sources. He will not ask you. He will rather go and beg his friends, ask his friends, they understand each other, than to come and ask you. He will never ask you for money. But that is the trick these people use. 
they shower you with wealth, they shower you with gifts, and then they turn it around and they start asking. Now, because you love them, you might give to them. But if you should sit down and think about it, and I've done my research, I realize that it's the same with every one of them. By the time you calculate, the value of all that they bought for you will not be equal to one tenth of what they are asking you to give to them. Yep. So you need to be very careful. The only safeguard to that is to make sure you don't borrow money to any man until you are married to him. When you are married to him, everything that is his is yours. Everything that is yours is his. You can borrow each other money, no problem. But until you get married to a man, do not borrow him money. Please. I've had too many sad stories from ladies. Do not borrow a man money that you are not married to. And number eight, he's always suspecting you of being with somebody else. When you are away, maybe in another state, you travel to a maybe you visit your family or friends, he'll always be calling you. You think it's fear. It's not fear. It's control and fear. He doesn't want you to be with someone else. He's very controlling. He's not real, but he wants to hold you to himself until he can get what he can get from you before he releases you. He's afraid that if you meet somebody else that might be more genuine, you might fall in love with them and then they will be left stranded. So they are always suspecting you. When you are with your friends, he wants to make a video call in order to see if you are really with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might even mention it that I hope you are not with somebody else. Though. That is because they are with somebody else. They are either married or they are playing a lot of people at the same time in order to get maximum benefit before they are discovered. So, somebody who is always suspecting you, by the way, whether they are real or not, somebody who is always controlling you, always trying to see, know your whereabouts, and always asking you if you are with somebody else, if you are with another man, you should not even be with such a one, because your life will be miserable living with such a person. But that is one trick that comes men use. You think it's love, that oh, they are always calling you, they are always checking on you, your family will be like, ah, is this the only guy that is calling you? Or whenever your phone rings, you just know that he's the one. <laughs> you might think he's love because you're in love with him. But he's not in love with you. He's here to take from you. And he will do all necessary. He has to safeguard his assets. They are his assets. He has to make sure that you don't have contact with any other man so that you will not fall for them and leave him behind. So, somebody who is always controlling, please check that person. Because they are suspecting you of doing what they are doing. Whatever they are suspecting you of doing is exactly what they are doing. Con men are very, very smart people. They can hide their tracks. And that is why you cannot do without the help of the Holy Spirit. I give relationship counseling here. But I believe that God is able to reveal things that are hidden from your own eyes. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, He will make you perceive things. Your spirit will perceive it before your eyes, your physical eyes can see the evidence. Of what he's showing you so trust in god at all times don't lean on your own understanding he alone can help you if you're in a relationship with someone right now ask god what is it about this person that they are not showing me that i need to know and one more thing to always remember if you have any doubt at all the slightest possible doubt about anybody you're in a relationship with then it's time to leave that relationship because down the line that doubt will grow and expand and become something else. And then you'll be regretting, oh, I felt this thing. Why didn't I take it seriously? So if you're in a relationship and you want to get married to the person, you should not have any doubt. Once you think, ah, am I doing the right thing? Then it's time to take a step back and really consider whether you're doing the right thing. Con men can be very convincing. They are very eloquent. They know exactly what to say. That is their superpower. They know exactly what to say, when to say it. They know when to cash in on any opportunity. When you are at your most fragile. And that's why most times they go after older ladies. You know, those that are already in their early 30s, late 20s, early 30s. When they know that you are almost getting desperate. And you are scared that you might not meet Mr. Right. That is when they come in. They target you. You are even in a juicier prospect if you are working. <laughs> they want to scan you out of your resources and get other benefits along the line. So, if you are working, you are even more attractive to them. They will come to you and do whatever it takes. They can rent a car in order to impress you, if they think that kind of thing will impress you. So, be very careful. Ask God to show that person to you. Ask him to reveal their worst to you, so that you will know 
whether you want to live with them, whether you want to spend the rest of your life with them or not. And if you have been watching so far and you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It's like um, your way of evangelism. When you give us a thumbs up, you give us a like, it will enable the video to go to more people. Also, please subscribe if you haven't and share with your friends so that they can avoid such evil men. So my dear esteemed viewers, I would like to know, do you like the way I go straight into the video and begin listing the points? Or would you prefer I have a nice fancy intro? Let me know down in the comments so that I will know how to proceed.